Welcome, welcome, one and all, to my show. So this is Captain Steve, and we're doing a reactions video. We're doing it to top 10 UFOs caught on camera. So let's head on over to my reactions area, because we need my little toolbox of wizardry bits. Heck yes, we do. So this one is top 10 UFOs caught on camera, uploaded 6th of June 2020. It's right at the start. Here we go. And it's by WatchMojo. What? 24.6 million subscribers. And probably similar in frickin' view count. Oh, you frickin' beauty. Right, okay, well, let's make this full screen. Let's make sure I've got the settings dialed up to the nines. And let's hit play. Let's do that thing. Let's hit this up. Let's do my reactions. Are we alone in the universe? This evidence suggests we aren't. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 UFOs caught on camera. I didn't think we were alone in the universe, people. No, because I've heard a rumour. I've heard a rumour that Venus flytraps only grow in one place on the planet, and it just so happens to be where a crater hit or a, or a meteorite or something. And yeah, that's why they're called Venus flytraps, because maybe they came from Venus. That's what I've heard. I don't know whether it's true or not. And also scorpions, apparently. You throw them in space and they can survive in a vacuum and they glow under ultraviolet light. What's that about? And their brain's in the wrong place compared to other creatures on this planet. So people think it's maybe they they thinks, they thinks, they do thinks that maybe scorpions are alien beings. Anyhow, let's um, let's hit up play. Let's let's see the first one. We haven't even got to the first one. And I'm already coming up with weird shite. Yeah. For this list, we're looking at the most famous, argued about, and unusual videos of unidentified flying objects. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. I do like what I'm hearing, but it better not be copyrighted. So I'm shouting over it. <laughs> Right, skip Number that. 10, the ISS light beam. In 2016, a video surfaced on YouTube from NASA's live feed of the International Space Station, seemingly showing an object making atmospheric entry. The feed was then suspiciously cut off, although NASA claims that this was due to technical difficulties and the object was likely debris or lights from Earth. I was going to say it's probably debris falling into Earth's atmosphere and burning it up. It's not moving all that fast. It's not making a change in directions. It's just plummeting and it's lighting up. That can be explained by a lot of things inside of the verse that isn't a UFO, but it's unidentified. But is it flying? No, it's freaking falling. So it's unidentified falling object. It's still a UFO, technically, if you use the abbreviations, isn't it, though? But yeah, no, it is not a manned UFO craft or an alien UFO aircraft for that matter. Anyhow, I'm hit and play. However, a subsequent video from the same feed showed what appeared to be a similar object departing Earth, followed by a bright golden beam of light. Is this a UFO leaving the Earth, making the jump to hyperspace? These are real images from the International Space Station's live feed. They show a spherical object leaving the vicinity of the Earth and traveling upwards. As the object disappears, a beam of light shoots out. Holy fudge! The last time that conspiracy. Okay, now that one was more convincing. However, it was like one frame per second, so it's very hard to see exactly what was going there. I mean, you've got the planetary rotation, you've got the ISS moving as well. Could that have been stationary and moving? But because everything else is moving, it looked like it was moving because it was one frame per second. It's hard to say, but it's not. I'm not convinced yet. This video has done nothing for me so far, people. Conspiracy theorists gravitated towards the ISS. In 2020, the feed captured another object moving over Earth. It was later reported that this was a retired communications component being jettisoned, although we're definitely keeping a close watch on the ISS. We discard of our trash and, um, and equipment that's, uh, that's been put through its paces and is now retired. Number nine, the STS-48 incident. Okay, so that whole ISS one, I'm gonna be going for I don't know. I'm going to go for, you're having a freaking Jeffrey. You're having a Jeffrey. Yeah, you know, you've got to be tripping, to be fair. It's, there was nothing there. There was nothing there that actually, it didn't go off in different angles. It didn't look like it was doing something intelligent. So, yeah, you're having a Jeffrey with that one, mate. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, no, just no, it's not happening. Right, okay, let's just carry on then. Didn't. Tony, what can you tell us about this last minute delay and what's happening right now? That's a freaking tash. Look at that. Like Ron Burgundy, but shit up. Launched on September 12th, 1991, the STS 48 mission's goal was to deploy satellites from the space shuttle Discovery. This scene shows here. A mustache was an unidentified furry object. Heck yes, it was. The actual release of UR's 
with the mechanical arm. The arm is being backed away from the spacecraft. In UFO circles, though, the what? mission is best remembered for footage captured on September 15th. While not easy to make out, the video this. shows objects zooming by and bright lights flashing in Earth's orbit. According to NASA, these were ice particles responding to the engine jets. Astronomer Phil Plate has backed up these claims, but we gotta admit, the believer in us likes to wonder. It's not the only space shuttle mission to have caught ufologists' eyes. In 1996, footage from STS-75 seemed to show objects buzzing around the broken tether of a drifting satellite. Debris? Or curious visitors? It's freaking debris! And, um, oh man, th th I'm really not impressed so far, people. This is another... I, you're having a freaking Jeffrey, mate. You're having a bloody Jeffrey. This is... Man, this sucks. This video freaking sucks. Okay, right, let's, let's carry on. Carry on. Yeah, for evidence, I mean, I love the way that's being presented. I like your voice. I like that the fact that you've actually got real footage and shite. But to be fair, it, it, it doesn't cry alien to me. This does Natural phenomenon. Number eight, the Kaikoura Lights. It's only fitting that the Kaikoura Lights surfaced the year after Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind hit theaters. News I was just about to say this is now getting freaking good. Turns out that's a freaking movie. Right. Zealand's Kaikoura Mountain Ranges caught the media's attention on December 21st, 1978, when a cargo plane crew observed house-sized lights flashing around the aircraft for several minutes. Thousands of UFO documents have been released by the New Zealand Air Force. The documents released under freedom of information laws cover sightings dating back to 1954. Air traffic control specialists from Wellington tracked the lights, which an Australian television crew then recorded in colour. The TV crew came along for the cargo plane's next flight from Wellington back to Christchurch. Shortly after takeoff, the crew captured footage of a giant illuminated orb. New Zealand. It could be a frickin' Chinese frickin' lantern. You know, that that's... It's just a ball of light. There's no flashy bits, there's no change of direction. It's just some person with a janky camera and a frickin' Chinese frickin' lantern. The Ministry of Defence has provided several possible explanations, including lights from boats, cars or Venus. But alternative explanations abound. Others say it could have been an unusually bright sighting of Venus or merely radio and light wave transmissions. But for those who believe, even the publication of such sightings is a... <laughs> oh, the, the advert's freaking better than what I'm presenting. Isn't it? Look at that for a game. So you make yeah. Number seven, the Phoenix Lights. The Phoenix Lights have inspired a documentary and multiple horror movies, but nobody can say for sure what happened on March 13th, 1997. In 1997, you took part in one of the largest military cover-ups in United States history. That's correct. This incident can be broken into two phases. First, a V-shaped formation was seen flying over Phoenix, although little footage exists of this event, and the footage we do have is low quality. There's more documentation of the second event, which saw five circular lights floating in the night sky. There Okay, well, you can see there's some sort of dark structure there. However, I have seen quite large airborne drones that have got massive wingspans just like that, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was our own military aircraft until something goes zip, zoom, pow. I'm, I'm, no, it just looks man freaking made, that, mate. Yeah, so, oh, my days. I'm going to be putting a complete arse biscuit on this one. I think that is military aircraft. Military aircraft... Yeah, that's what I'm going with. And um, I bet you as soon as I hit play again, it does that zip, zoom, bang. And I'm like, right, fudging real, mate. But here we go. Let's hit play. There were many events starting at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and continuing all the way until 5.30 the next morning. Even with numerous photographs, videos and eyewitness accounts, though, a giant question mark continues to hover over Phoenix. While the U.S. Air Force chalked the lights up to military flares, many have argued against these claims. And even Arizona Governor Fife Symington described what he saw as, quote, otherworldly. Well, I saw a, uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over Squaw Peak um, that was, you know, it was just breathtaking. Number six, the Chilean Navy. The Chilean government agency which investigates UFOs or unidentified aerial phenomenon has declassified and released never-before-seen video from 2014 
showing a mysterious flying object of which they suggest could have been a UFO. A little speck can certainly stir up a lot of speculation. In 2017, the Chilean government agency tasked with examining UFO sightings released footage of a flying object that defied explanation. The footage, which had been classified for almost three years, was taken by the Chilean Navy from a helicopter during the day. The pilot failed to make contact with the object, which moved like another helicopter. Even more curious, the object didn't pop up on air traffic control radar. I guess she said it herself, it moved like another helicopter. Guess what that freaking is then? It's another freaking helicopter. Instead it starts going zip, zam, boom, pat. Not interested, mate. Freaking no, that's another freaking arse biscuit, that one. There you go. You, sir, are an arse biscuit. That little thing there, arse biscuit, complete waste of freaking time. And when we're halfway through this freaking video, you better come up top, top trumps when we get to number one, my friend. In two instances, the object ejected some type of gas or liquid with high thermal tracking. Captured on video, you can see a massive plume of material trailing behind the object. Most mysterious of all, the UFO released an unknown substance. Th this is why it didn't make contact. You've got a helicopter coming over to it, like a Chinook or something, from a freaking naval ship going, hello, hello, identify yourself, identify yourself. And there's a load of freaking drug bounds in there going, shite, we need to throw this out the freaking window. Throw it out the window. Yeah, that, that's what's happening there. That, that's not aliens, mate. And vanished into the sky. Experts were stumped, with the agency's director saying, quote, we do not know what it was, but we do not know what it was not. Well, that's reassuring. After an extensive study, the Committee for the Study of Anonymous Aerial Phenomena agreed it had all the characteristics to be classified as an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Number five, the Mexican Air Force video. On March 5th, 2004, the Mexican Air Force recorded footage of 11 UFOs at 11,500 feet above Southern Campeche State. Surrounding a military jet, these lights were detected during a routine search for drug traffickers. Jets. They should have been on the last freaking one, shouldn't they? They should have been on the last sorte with that freaking helicopter. Oh, for fuck's sake. Pursued the UFOs, but eventually gave up and the objects disappeared. While some believe this was the work of flares, explanations also range from ball lightning to a meteorite. It's not freaking flares, mate. Look, there's a bloody pattern. Look, one's slightly dipped and then two. One slightly dipped and then two. It's some kind of aircraft that's got three freaking lights in it and there's bloody two of them. They're flying in formation. It's not flares. It's it's man-made craft yet again. Until it goes zip, zap, pow, you know, all over the place. Then no, just as soon as it does turns that none of our other ships can do or it will make a human turn inside out because of G-force. It's not freaking alien. It's just not. Deteriorating in Earth's atmosphere. Whatever these objects were, infrared equipment operator Lieutenant Mario Adrian Vasquez is convinced that they were, quote, completely real. Pilot Major Magdaleno Castañón went so far as to suggest that the UFOs knew they were being pursued. Number four, the Aguadilla Airport incident. I don't believe in you in my life. Even by UFO standards, this one's perplexing. It all started in April 2013 at the Rafael Hernandez Airport, located in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. A video was taken of an unknown object swiftly flying over land and then seeming to submerge underwater. After doing so multiple times, the object appears to split in two. Supposedly, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security tried to keep this under wraps, but the video was eventually leaked by an anonymous whistleblower. A group known as the Scientific Coalition for Ufology was responsible for posting the footage online. According to the SCU website, it, quote, exhibits characteristics that cannot be explained by any known aircraft. Okay, the, the thing I've got with this one, if we just scuttle that back for According a second. According to the SCU website, it, okay. quote, exhibits characteristics... Pause. These are cars. These are freaking cars. That is fudging tiny. <laughs> it's a tiny little... Air. That's a tiny freaking one, to be fair, isn't it? And it's not like travelling at super duper speeds. The fact that it goes underwater and splits into two is interesting. I mean, I don't know of any drones that can do that because they're on propellers, so that, that rules out drone. Because that's what I thought, first of all. When I first saw this, I thought, that's a freaking drone, mate. No, it, if it goes underwater and comes out of water, I've got no real exclamation, I've got explanation for this one. Um, 
So that one, that one's going to get what the fudge, because I can't tell what that is. And I'd be surprised if anybody else can tell us what that is. But if you've got an idea, put it in the comments. I'd love to read what you think that one is. So, so far, this one has been quite good. I've got an advert coming up. Fudging balls. OK, right, well, let's put that back into my toolbox and let's hit play. Let's see what advert we get, shall we? Sticks that cannot be explained by any known aircraft or natural phenomenon. Just downloaded a game that says real pull the pin game. <laughs> There's no way that can be real. It probably could be real, mate. I mean, that's, that looks like a pretty shite game. That one with the zombies and the lady crawling through the freaking aqueduct earlier, though. That one, I reckon, is a freaking fake freaking... It probably is be a real lame sort of like resource gathering one. It won't be that. Number three, go fast. Our Ooh. top three UFO sightings are actually part of a package, Brilliant. although each has a distinctive signature. Pentagon has now declassified three videos showing Navy fighter pilots interacting with... What is it with the unidentified facial object or furry object going on? Frick, they love their tashes, don't they, these UFO guys? Oh, man, I, I might get in on this. I think I'd look rather spiffing with a tash. Right, anyhow. Let's carry on. Unidentified flying objects. Watch. Filmed by the U.S. Navy and published online in the late 2010s, they were declassified and officially released by the Pentagon in 2020. Hey, go ahead. What the? <laughs> released under the file name Go Fast, this video was taken over the East Coast in January 2015 by an F-A-18F Super Hornet during the USS Theodore Roosevelt UFO incidents. The footage was captured using Raytheon's Advanced Targeting Forward-Looking Infrared Pod, or AT FLIR. And just as entertaining as the footage itself is the fighter pilot's comments. While the audio is somewhat hard to understand, you can certainly grasp the astonishment they experienced while watching the object. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at this thing, man. Look at this thing. <laughs> Number two, FLIR 1. Okay, that one, that previous one, that is also a what the fudge. Oh, what the fudge have I just done with my blood? I've locked that. I've pressed lock on that. That shouldn't have even moved. What the fudge? Yeah, that one is definitely a what the fudge because, oh my days. Even the actual pilots that were filming it were like, you could, you could hear in their voices, they didn't know what it was. That's definitely an unidentified flying object and it was moving at speed. Yes, it didn't make any brake note turns. And maybe at that speed, maybe a pilot could handle that sort of level of G-force. So could it have been a man-made identified flying object? Yes, it could. But it still falls into the realm of UFO. Do I think it's alien, though? Probably not, because it was a linear flight. It didn't do anything that we couldn't tolerate and with inside our own vessels. So do I think it was alien? Maybe not. It'd probably be some sort of Russian experimental thing. Who knows? But anyhow, let's move on to this chap. It's a clear blue sky. There's no wind. And you see this tic tac. It's just this white object that's randomly moving around. It makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up a little bit. Also released by the Pentagon, FLIR 1 was filmed on November 14th, 2004, around the San Diego coastline. Like Go Fast, this video was also taken aboard a Super Hornet using AT FLIR. The footage was captured during the USS Nimitz UFO incident, in which the Navy had a radar visual encounter. The video centers on a dark round object that suddenly moves slightly to the left. After lingering a little while longer, the object quickly darts even further until it's completely out of sight. Commander David Fravor can't tell you exactly what the object was, but he recalls that it, quote, accelerated like nothing he'd ever seen. There's no propulsion, there's no wings. It rapidly accelerates and disappears, like, poof, gone. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I chased a UFO. Before we continue, be sure. Okay, now that one is quite cool. You've got the exclamation, uh, explanation there. Uh, that one is a definite... I think that one's going to be... I think that one's about as real as we're going to see today, people. I'm going to go for fudging real, mate. Yeah, look at that. It's all transparent. You can even see the South Parkers through it. Isn't that freaking awesome as a graphic? I know. I made that myself. I did. I did, honest. Right, okay, cool. And then uh, let's uh, press on. Was that number one? Is that all ten? Have we done all ten? Be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our I don't know. Videos. I don't know whether I will. Have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. I've got to say, Mojo, the first half of that was just load of arse biscuits. It was a load of arse biscuits, mate. You've actually pulled it back in the last, like, five minutes. But you know what? I'm not overly impressed. Number one, Gimbal. Rounding out this trio of UFO videos is Gimbal, which the Navy captured the same year as Go Fast. Oh my gosh. 
They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Often getting mixed up with the USS Nimitz UFO incident, this sighting actually took place aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt by the coast of Florida. Out of the three videos, the object in Gimbal arguably looks the most like a flying saucer. Before you jump to any conclusions, skeptical investigator Mick West has called all three of these sightings into question, believing the Gimbal object is just a plane. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. Honestly, the world may never know. If you think this is all of the UFO information that the U.S. government's been sitting on, former Senator Harry Reid claims that it, quote, only scratches the surface. Because I don't think no one has the answers. And that is too bad because there are answers out there. But we're not going to get answers just by hoping they come. You're going to have to take some work. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure... Right, okay. Um, that was number one. And it looked like the third from last as well and so forth and so on they, they did say it was part of a package and if you was to deliver that as a package i would be maybe what the fudge mate because even one of the naval officers at the end there she kind of spoiled us a little by saying has said that they're all freaking planes now i did say that they were moving quite linear so there's a good chance that they could be man-made craft that other chap to say that there were no wings or signs of propulsion maybe they might be working on something new you don't know. I mean, they have made missiles that can change direction. You know, the, the hypersonic missiles. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't say any of those came across as overly alien. I think a lot of them looked man-made. And um, yeah, I wouldn't say that they were outer spacey type UFOs. So no, I, don't, I didn't find any of those overly convincing people. But there we go. That's what I think. Let us know in the comments what you think. Let's, um, let's make myself a little bigger, just why I'm ending off on this. So yeah, sorry about that, people. I mean, that's the thing with these reaction videos. You know, I'm, I'm watching them as you're watching them. Oh, that's the first time I watched it. I didn't know. I didn't know that they would be a little bit cack that time. So yeah, I will hopefully hit up some better UFO ones in the future. But you know what? If you find something that's freaking awesome that you want me to react to, I like doing top 10s. I like doing top 10s or um, 20s maybe at a push. But yeah, send me them. Send me them. Hit me up. Yeah, excellent. I put them as a... Uh, yeah, if I... Mm. Yeah, put them in the comments. You, you might be able to put them in the comments as a link, or it might get blocked. All right, won't be blocked by me. Might get blocked by YouTube. But yeah, just stick them in my comments. Until next time, people. Slitter Mondo. Take care. Cheery bye and all that shenanigans and hit all the buttons. Yeah, you know what you're doing.